Say, look, the wedding rings are ready. You two now prepare the wedding gown. But there is a quality aspect to that preparation of the wedding gown. Because by looking at how much time he took to design and develop the wedding rings, how much time he took to build the wedding rings, you begin to understand that he equally expects the church to take a lot of time to develop the wedding rings. Let's read the Bible in the book of First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, chapter 4. Again, First Thessalonians, precious people. I'm reading chapter 4. Verses 16 and 17. This is the revelation the Lord has given to the church. He says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And he says, After that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Listen to me, precious viewers. You see very clearly here that there is a secret embedded in the message of the wedding rings. And when you look very carefully at this scripture here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, you begin to see the unraveling of this secret to the church. This is the message the Lord is giving to the church. He says, the Lord himself will come down from heaven. That is heaven. The Lord coming down from heaven into the sky. And then the dead in Christ, after the voice of the archangel, the trumpet call of God, the dead in Christ will be the first to resurrect and be caught up with the Lord where? In the sky. And then he says, after that, then those who are still alive will be transformed, translated in their glorious bodies to catch up with the Lord where? In the sky. The Lord come into the sky, the dead come in rapturing and resurrecting in glorious bodies to the sky, the living translated to the sky, and yet the Father on the 1st of November 2006 at 3 a.m. removes the wedding rings from heaven and places in the sky. Hallelujah. That tells you that the wedding rings have already been placed at the place of the wedding, the site of the wedding. That is in the sky. And that tells you that the wedding of the Lamb of God will take place in the sky. That's where we meet the Lord. Heaven opens and the rapture takes place. Meeting, uniting with the Lord is the wedding. Being united with the Lord. What a mighty revelation. And that tells the church that if the wedding rings are talking about the necessity the need for the church to prepare the glorious wedding gown, even proportionate with the much time the Father has taken to, 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 to really design and develop and to decorate the wedding rings. If the church is to decorate a spotless gown like the Bible has ordained and commanded, then there is not much time. That means she has a very small window to quickly prepare for the, for the we glorious wedding, the wedding of the Lamb, to prepare her wedding gown. But where is the wedding gown? Now listen to me. We have now seen that the Father puts the wedding rings in the sky at the site of the wedding. That's where everybody meets the Lord, unites with the Lord. That's the wedding. And then heaven opens 
the church then goes into the wedding supper of the Lamb of God. That means she doesn't have much time. The rings are ready, and not only are they ready, but they are at the place of the wedding. The revelation is that the wedding might take place anytime from now. Anytime from now. And that means the church needs to move very fast and make sure that the gown she wears is spotless. Spotless, like the Bible has ordained. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 7, we're talking about the wedding gown. We're talking about the message that the Lord is giving the church by presenting the wedding gown in the sky. And we realize now that the message is that, look, for every wedding there are rings and a wedding gown. My part has been done. I have already prepared the wedding rings. You too get ready with a spotless gown. Listen to me, precious viewers. The book of Revelation 19, verses 7 to 9, it says, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, listen to that, fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Hallelujah. And in this Bible, it says, fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints, the holiness of the saints. Then the angel said to me, write, blessed are those who are invited into the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the, these are the true words of God. Listen to me, precious viewers. First of all, in that scripture, he is talking about the entire heaven, saying, let us rejoice and be glad, for the wedding of the Lamb has come. And we know that the Lamb is worshipped in heaven. All the angels worship him. They say, glory be unto the Lamb. He has purchased for our God all the peoples and the nations of the earth. When the blueprint for man's salvation was supposed to be broken open, the seven seals, they searched under the earth, on the earth, they searched in heaven and above heaven, and nobody was found that was worthy to open the seven seals. And then the angel said, Don't worry, the line of the tribe of Judah, he has triumphed again. He is worthy of opening the seven seals for the blueprint of man's salvation. Hallelujah. In other words, he is the king of glory, the darling of heaven. The mighty God, mighty Savior, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. How mighty is the day of his wedding in heaven? That's why you see, they're saying, let us rejoice and be glad for the wedding of the Lamb has come. There's big excitement in heaven, emphasizing the fact that that is the biggest day in the calendar of heaven. The day of the wedding of the Lamb of God. And that is the most important day in the calendar of the church. Because that is the first time the church is able to cross from death and enter into the kingdom of God. Remember the church was created as part of the kingdom of God. Remember, the church does not belong to the earth. The church belongs to heaven. I know there's a lot of confusion right now. She is in a place where she's more earthly than heavenly right now. She's preaching a 